Tony, what are we here to talk about this week? We're here to talk about the six million dollar man, the made for TV pilot, basically. The first one. The very first one, not the other versions, but the very first one. The pilot movie. Yes. Of the six million dollar man after seeing Robocop's original Robocop reboot. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So what'd you think of it? The uh the pilot is you know, I I always do like the little classic sci fi 1970s, you know, movies because they kind of, you know, they kind of feel a little bit nostalgic, you know, and I kind of like, like it, you know, it's, it's pretty good. I did enjoy the movie, you know, I mean, it was a little slow paced, but as long as they try to get everything together and bundle it up in the end, you know, it, it wraps it up pretty good, you know, it, well, it's kind of, kind of be, got to be more of a drama than an action. Yeah, it, because it is. We've got to see him go through the entire rebuilding. Yeah, we saw we saw the uh, I guess you would call it the montage of him trying to um, rehab. Regain, yeah, regain his the ability to walk, using his uh, arm that he lost and whatnot. You know, we didn't get to see the, the eye in action, but I'm pretty sure that's because of the budget cuts. Or they didn't know what to do with the yeah. eye at that time. Yeah, but uh, you know they they the story flowed perfectly. You know where was a test pilot astronaut and got into a car crash and they had her rebuild airplane them. crash airplane crash and they had her re, uh, rebuild, rebuild them and whatnot and then the montage and then he went on his first mission and you know it was successful it was supposed to be successful but it was successful and you know hey I enjoyed it you know it was a short simple story you know told in about 90 minutes and it worked and it flowed pretty good you know i mean there are, there will be some people who don't like the six million dollar man but hey i enjoyed it you know it was pretty good so what'd you think of it robbie i liked it it was a little corny in some places but um explain what do you th- what was corny well it's a 70s um thing there it's, it's so you're holding together you're, you're holding the fact that it's a 70s thing so it's corny no 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 no, no i'm just saying mm-hmm. classic trek is 60s yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure. Next that, generation is is 80s. Yeah, I'm pretty sure almost every film has some kind of corny oh, thing yes, to so. it. It's not just tied down to just 70s films. Yes. Now the Power Rangers are corny. That's true. I'll openly admit that. But I liked it. It was fun. It was it was it was fun. It was a. I liked it. Um. It was nice seeing the, uh, an origin to some of the later works in sci-fi, especially dealing with robotics and cyborgs and whatnot, you know I mean? The man becoming a machine. Yeah, you can definitely see some influence from uh, Robocop, um, uh, this mm-hmm. one game, Deus, Deus Ex, you know, I mean, I, I played it, you have it. And, Even you know, um, DC's Cyborg. Sorry, I, I, I dropped the ball there. You know, all he had to say is, you know, DC Cyborg, Vic Stone, right. high school uh, champion, loses all, and then his dad rebuilds him. Mm-hmm. Better, but he does not stuff. live, does not like what becomes of him. But no, he didn't have to say, yeah. he, he just didn't know how to say that. Yeah. Or just say angry black, black youth becoming bionic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, I, I really appreciate the help. Yeah, you know, no, this is on the screen where you say epic, epic, failure, failure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, def- definite influences from uh, other sci-fi movies to come later, you know. I mean, it, it's it's good. It, it influenced more films, video games, probably some novels out there. You know, I'd have to say it influenced more video games than film. Because it's most, most predominant film it influenced is the Robocop franchise. Yeah, I mean, I guess... And a little bit of no, I w- I can't say Terminator. There's not a whole lot. In, uh, the man, the yeah. machine, because he's he's not. It's the machine. He's not a man. man. It's a man, a machine becoming a man. Yeah. And it, and he's he's a monster in the first film. Yeah. Then he becomes reprogrammed to become a, a to understand what it is to be human. And then by the end of the series, of of let's say James Cameron series, the machine has humanity. Yeah. 
So, you know, I, you know, it's a tiny little influence, I'd say, you know, some subtle things that you, normal people wouldn't actually find unless you're looking for it, you know, but there's definitely, you know, a lot of influence in the Robocop series, and, uh, yeah, you know, it, it was a good film, I enjoyed it, it's, it was a fun ride, you know. Well, let's talk about, since you brought up Robocop, the 2014 Robocop is heavily influenced by the, uh, the Six Million Dollar Man series, unlike... Yeah. The original RoboCop, which is more influenced by the Lone Ranger. The um, the newer one, you can see a lot of more influences from the Six Million Dollar Man, especially with the uh, what's his name, uh, Gary Oldman's character, who would um, be Rudy Wells. Yeah, who yeah. was more predominant, like in the uh, Six Million Dollar Man and in the new 2014 RoboCop. You know, um, of course the um, the the time period that Six Million Dollar Man was set was a little bit different. So instead of being a cop, you know, I guess an agent would agent would have worked would have worked as well, you know. And you know, I do like I said, I always did like the little. I guess you can say like a time period because back then, you know, when uh, spying and the Cold War was still around, you can really call that. The uh, movie, the made-for-TV movie, uh, uh, a time period, basically. A period film, kind of. It tells us about the Cold War. Yeah. Something that, once the Cold War ended, it ruined a lot of franchises. Less yeah. The, like the Captain America comic book, the James Bond franchise almost died. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. we got Robbie shaking his head. So what do you have to say, Robbie? Well, I, I, I definitely agree there. You just agree. You have no opinion, no nothing. You just agree. We'll go back to Tony now. You know, the uh, the Cold War was a different time, so you can definitely see a lot of uh, influences from that as well. Anti-communism. Where was anti-communism in the first Six Million Dollar Man movie? Uh, they're, they're trying to keep up with the Russians. It's very little, not... They're trying to get to certain places before the Russians. Yeah. Basically, it's a, an equivalent to the space race. Yeah. Not until we get to the second film does it become Cold War. Mm. It's just, you know, the little subtle hints that here and there, you know. That Don't you miss Brandon? Yes. Yes. But I miss Brandon a lot. Because he, he, he made you look smarter. Not only that. He did a I review do miss him. of, uh, what was it, Generations. Sleeping. Oh, that was a great review. Oh, yes. And, uh, just five minutes of him sleeping. <laughs> that summed but, up uh, the film. But, uh, yeah, you know, the... Uh, the influence there, you know, from the Six Million Dollar Man was heavily predominant in the new RoboCop. So do you think the new RoboCop pulled off the story of Cyborg better or did uh, the Six Million Dollar Man? Cause well, having not read the book, I can't really say so. But but we were reading the premise on Wikipedia, mm -hmm. we'll say. Um, I'd say Six Million Dollar Man did it better because I... It, I think it's stuck better to the novel, novel than the uh, than RoboCop did. I'm sure, like, I haven't... Because I know when we were talking about RoboCop, one of the big problems was the humanity element, which just wasn't showing through, even though the filmmaker tried to get it. As we're in a $6 million man, you get the humanity elements of the man becoming the monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, humanity within the $6 million man, you know, it's... Predominant, you can't really, well, back then you can't really, I guess, they couldn't really switch it off, you know, because he was never fully a uh, robot, or, you know, or, yeah, he wasn't fully robot, he still had his same body, unlike in RoboCop where his whole body was literally replaced replaced with uh, cybernetics, robotic parts, you know. So in this one, they really can't switch off the humanity, basically, because, well, he's still got his entire body, he can still eat, he needs to eat. I'm pretty sure he needs to still, you know, shower and I know. shit and whatnot, you know, so, you know, hum the humanity. Do you have to I, shit, Robbie? Um, yeah, but I know I'm dumb here, but I've forgotten the name of the actor who played the $6 million man. Lee Majors. Lee Majors. I really liked his acting because I feel you really get a feeling for the emotion of what he's trying to convey, the humanity. You know where you learned that? Where? From Barbara Stranrick on oh, wow. Big Valley. Really? Yes. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Do you even know what that is? Um, not really, but I've heard of it. Do you know who Barbara Strandick is? Uh, yeah. Okay. At least he got one half of the uh, question right. I, yeah, for, through White Lies. Could yeah, be. Yeah. Uh, Next we, we should review is The Art of Lying. 
Yes. <laughs> the uh, the human element was pretty present throughout here because you can see uh, Steve Austin. You know, I don't really want to do this. You know, I kill me basically. What is the cost? At first, it's what to kill me. Then what is the cost? Because it's always a hidden yeah, cost. Yeah. So he he always he already he worked in government so long he knew. Yeah. There's there, something. There's a catch. There's a the cat. devil's gonna want his payment. Mm-hmm. And you know he got thrown into the whole. I guess being a spy in the first film, it doesn't really show him as a spy. No. He's more of a. He's a tool. A tool, a mercenary sort. A weapon. Know. Well, explain weapon. Well, think about it. they send him into basically. First, they trick him into believing that there's someone he's there to save at the um, desert um, camp, right? Well, when he gets there, he finds out basically the guy has already been executed. He was sent there basically to either destroy the place or die. He, we, he, he didn't he, quite he, see the same movie, did yeah. he? He was sent there to test him. Mm-hmm. They tricked him into uh, going in there to rescue someone. Mm-hmm. They didn't send him into a seek and destroy mission, Robbie. Mm-hmm. Now we're calling the project unfinished, not worth going on. Mm-hmm. You know, they sent him. They basically sent him to his death because he's still human. Yeah. Because the human mind hindered him. Yeah. Because it was either. Because that's what um, the di- the government guy was going on about is that it's the one thing I we couldn't fix. Is the mo- human uh, psyche the human element? See, and that's more. That's more that. That thing plays more heavily in the uh, RoboCop series. Mm-hmm. This one, you can't switch. Like I said, you can't switch it off. So, yeah. you know, the, the, his humanity is still intact, basically. Like I said, his he got into a pretty bad um, testing uh, airplane crash. NASA, NASA airplane yeah. crash. Yeah, which you know, I'm pretty sure they couldn't really show it at the time. You know, the whole pretty bad disfigurement of the body, but. They did what they did back then, you know, and they did a pretty good job at it, you know. Well, just seeing him in the bandages and stuff is pretty powerful. Well, to just show you enough from underneath the sheets of, of what he's missing. Yeah. Like I said, it was it was made back then where, uh, you know, you really couldn't do a whole lot on TV. But, you know, for what they did with the small budget, I assume, for being just a made-for-TV pilot film, they did a pretty good job. You know, they kept it. Pretty simple, you know, not, there wasn't a lot of action scenes until the very end, but it just kept it simple enough to follow the story for everybody, you know. Because we're following the man becoming the monster, then becoming a man again. And I did like that little touch, too, when he first woke up with his uh, cybernetics, he called, uh, what's his, uh... Rudy Wells. Rudy Wells, uh... uh, Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein. Not Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein. Frankenstein's a monster. Doc the Frankenstein is the creator. Mm-hmm. And that was a nice little touch there, you know, the little subtle hints of, uh, I guess, things that influenced the $6 million man as well, you know? Yeah. So that, was kind of, that was a nice, I'm pretty sure there was more. Because but, Frankenstein's entire point of this thing is to rebuild a, a human. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the uh, I'm pretty sure there's smaller, other subtle hints that influenced the $6 million man, but, you know, that, that, was, a, that was a more predominant one that stuck out to me. But uh, it was a good, good film, good story, easy, simple to follow. It's only 90 minutes. You don't need to go through, you know. They, they did enough with the, uh, I guess, with the female lead in the film, you know, where it wasn't much of a hindrance or anything. But uh, it kept the, it flowed pretty good, you know. And uh, I, I enjoyed it pretty good. Unlike, the, Unlike uh, Robocop 2014. Where the wife slowly becomes a hindrance for the movie instead of mm-hmm. a helping to progress the story and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she, in, in the uh, later in the series, the nurse becomes more of a more of a uh, not a lead, but more of an important character. You know, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen, but to me, it looks like she will become something more of an important character later in the series. Where she actually does more than just, you know... They had plans for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have plans. But I'm not sure. I haven't seen the rest of the series, all the movies, so I can't really... And you can't tell because there's different creators. Because the second second leg of the series in movie form is taken, taken control by Glenn A. Larson, creator of Battlestar Galactica. So, you know, there's lots of... I'm pretty sure there's changes throughout the, uh, the, throughout the series as well, you know. I mean, you know... 
the you know from reading just from the uh, the box of the uh, first season, you know, it sounds like he's a spy basically. So he uh, he he does um, spying. Obviously, I'm not sure if he does this assassinations and whatnot, but uh, no, he doesn't. Well, he does. I'm pretty sure he does kill people though. Oh, he and kills them in yeah. self defense. Mm-hmm. But uh, I did like that little touch too, where you know, do I have to kill people? Can I do my things my own way? You know, and I guess you can't really show a whole lot of death in in TV. I assume back then, you know, so it was kind of like a nice little touch where he said, you know, I, I I'm going to do my things my own way. If I'm gonna it gave him a moral thing. code. Yeah, you know, where I can't, I won't kill unless I have to kill. You know, and I did like that part. You know, where it's not necessary to go out there and just shoot up the place unlike you know the robocop film but it worked for it worked in robocop you know well what works in you mean in robocop 2014 no no that 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 one never had any action scenes in it but the old the 87 one did have a lot of action scenes. oh yeah oh yeah but yeah you know like i said i did like it where he had a, a choice where he still had you know his humanity his code you know where he can kill if he needs to and he won't kill if he doesn't have to I did like that, you know. I'm pretty sure in the rest of the series it shows that too, you know, where where he does. He has to make moral choices. Yeah, moral choices, you know. Of course, he's a machine or a cyborg where he can kill anybody with one punch of his cybernetic arm, but he chooses not to, you know. Like to me, whenever he was when he beat up the uh, the terrorist in the desert with his cyber, cybernetic arm, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm not sure, but. When he punched him with a cybernetic arm, I always felt like he just knocked him out and not killed him, you know? Just by the way, he hit the body lands limp. Because, mm-hmm. uh, well, you can obviously tell when uh, when he's about to throw a punch, he doesn't really punch the guy. So I'm pretty sure he just kind of, like, jabs at him enough to knock him out and not kill him. And, you know, the explosions, you can really tell that, you know, nobody really died with him. Or you can presume they died or they didn't because, you know, you can't really show a guy exploding, so... You can see him just jumping from the uh, the impact, the explosion, you know, the of him, the body flying from the explosion. So let's hear what Robbie has to say. Well, I just thought it was a fun movie, but yeah. You he, think everything on movie is a fun movie? Oh well, yeah, but even the bad ones. But um, like RoboCop 2014. Transformers yes. 4. We haven't seen Transformers 4. It might be fun. Yeah. It has Mark Wahlberg in it. No but, um, above. Yeah. Now that Tony brings it up, you're right. It never looks like he... It looks more like it's in, It's up to the person's interpretation whether he's actually killing or not because usually you just see the bodies flying like into the tents or something. When the well, in Robbie's goes. world, they just disappear. I really think people should see this because I really thought this was a fun, exciting, very good movie. I think that... uh. If you're gonna watch a six million dollar man, you gotta really have a a liking for like the seventies motif. The uh, it was it was really seventies, you know, and I kind of do like that. But you also gotta have a knack for uh, I guess movies that kind of influence other movies as well. You know, you you just can't you know oh I want I wonder what's going on I want to watch this. You know, you gotta really have a a knack for it, like a film buff or a sci-fi buff. You know just can't be an average show and just okay I'm gonna Netflix it and watch it but yeah I would recommend it to the sci-fi fans to the uh, Robocop fans you know that who really enjoyed the film you know I guess especially the 2014 one since it's more heavily influenced but Robocop 87 fans can still watch it so Robbie yeah anything else you want to say no good 